striking. You are one of the contributing authors to the anthology of essays, Colorizing Restorative Justice. And what stood out to me about your particular chapter was that you've written a lot of it in um, as like as if it was a play, as if it was a scene where you have these women of color uh, talking about their experiences uh, as a trainer. What was the inspiration for you formatting in that in that way? Well, I had written the short place of been like year, maybe like I don't know, two years before, and it had been produced and directed uh, on stage at the Fida Kahlo Theater, um, and so I saw it, you know, on stage, and and I saw it come to life. Um, and the stories in the short play were all like real stories of colleagues of color, of, um, of colleagues, women of color that I was working with um, who shared with me their stories about white supremacy, white fragility. And so I just kind of wanted to, to capture that and, and, and capture it and have folks converse with it. And so when I got the abstract, the call for abstracts from Living, from Living Justice Press, um, and specifically for the a Colorizing RJ book, I don't know, I immediately went to, to the play and I was like, oh, it would be, it would be cool. I've written this play, but it'd be really cool to actually dig deeper in the content of it, but to still utilize the stories. And so, um, yeah, so that helped me, I guess, you know, I, I was leading by my own curiosity. Mm -hmm. And so that I was still curious about those stories and those experiences. Um, and that's kind of yeah how I, I how I like synthesize the two for the chapter. Yeah, it was did that involve going back to those colleagues and like asking them more questions and digging deeper, or is that just uh you know going off of the exp their experiences which they had previously shared with you and then like uh, you know writing based off of the observations of like all the things that you uh, have experienced over well, the years. I had done. I had done the deep dive with them when I was writing the play. And so yeah. I was asking them and uh, we had a like a reading of it in the office, just a very small reading. And so I, I, I was still, there were still questions of curiosity. So that is what led me to write the chapter based on those experiences in those conversations. Yeah, no, that's really great. And I think, uh, it, one of the things that I found interesting in having so many conversations with people who have written in Colorizing Restorative Justice is that like we're writing for different audiences. I'm curious, like you, you talk so much about white fragility specifically in that chapter. Who were you intending to read uh, th this chapter and what were you hoping that they would get out of it? It was, I mean, the whole book is centered around the voices of the practitioners of color who do RJ. Um, which was already like a beautiful and refreshing place to stand. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was writing to folks that have been impacted by white supremacy and white fragility in training spaces. Um, and, but that's everybody because when we, when we, when I train, when we train, it's unless we're in a racial affinity group it's with all folks. And so um, the intended audience was I think people of color and also white folks. I think the attendant audience is anybody that has has been impacted in some way where there wasn't the um, I don't want to talk about safety, but where the there wasn't the place of risk taking to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And I think that includes everybody, but we're impacted in different ways by people's actions and by systems of power. Um, but to go back to your question, it was it was really I think I was thinking of folks of color initially, um, and but at the same time I will tell you that the going back to Sipin, which is the play that I incorporate in the chapter, the very first night that I saw it, um, uh, that I, it was staged in front of an audience, and then we had a. Uh, like a talk back with yeah. um, all of the writer, the all of the writers, because there was 10, 10 plays that were all in the same evening, and it was pretty much a Latinx audience, and mm -hmm. all of the writers were Latinx. But the 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 biggest uh, criticism about was from one of the writers who was Latinx, and she talked about her husband and her in-laws who are white in the audience. And so she was super activated by 
by Stephen, by, you know, the story of, of the four women of color talking about their impacts of white fragility. And so, you know, there's a lot of layers, even amongst uh, folks of color. And so I, 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 I think I just kind of allowed all of that to flow through, but centering my own experience uh, around storytelling. Well, yeah, it's, spaces. it's it's really interesting that you say that. I can vividly think in um, my own my own life, specifically in restorative justice spaces, working with a team of folks from different backgrounds and um, like white woman tears, like drawing so much attention and even for myself it's like I think there's a balance it, it at the time I thought it was like hey you know like we're all here in space um we're holding each other and so like this person is displaying like pain and sadness so, like so let's attend to that and I had a colleague of color uh, uh, someone who was a woman of color call that person out and say like you know you're just taking up the space in all this room and like calling us out, uh, me and another a man of color in the space, like, and you're giving her like all of the attention in the space where, you know, th this is not about rescuing that person, right? Um, there is a lot of work um, that like, even me as a person of color, right, uh, needs to do around how we hold, um, how we hold energy like that in those spaces. Yeah, I mean, there's, I think one of the, I, I try and like lean into each training or circle with like, what am I in service to or what do I want to bring into this space? And one of the things that I often bring in is this idea that there's always more to learn. Mm -hmm. And so I think as a way to not sh shame where folks are in their awareness or experience in emotions and in vulnerability, um, and that there at least could be this common place so that there's always more to learn and wherever you are is where you are. And, and but, and, and the other part of it that RJ has taught me is that I have the, I have the possibility to harm anybody at any time that whether it's a game called bibbidi bibbidi bop or whether <laughs> it's a question of what is a smell that you love, that there will always be the risk of activation. And so I just have to lean into that. And when there is activation or when there is harm, like how am I gonna lean into to accountability with that? And so I think kind of holding that has freed me in a sense to be able to lean in more when vulnerability will happen or when I mess up, which is, which is often, you know? Mm -hmm.